Mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So at the beginning uh, of our time together in Advent, we light the Advent candles. And in this second Sunday uh, in Advent, uh, it is lit for the prophets of old. Let me light that candle. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a saviour who would bring peace. You helped them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth to share with those around us the good news of your power and your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. So we come to our confession, the time of saying sorry to God. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and in faith. Turn to us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. Show your compassion, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our God forgives all who truly repent. Our God has mercy upon you, pardon and delivers you from all your sins, confirms and strengthens you in all goodness, and will keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so to our collect. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds that when your Son Jesus Christ comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice said, Cry out! And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands for ever. O Zion, you who bring glad tidings get up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, you who bring glad tidings, lift up your voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, and say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. This is the word of the Lord. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. That mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O From depths of hell thy 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord God, our Rock and our Redeemer. In our readings today, we see a pattern emerging. God leads his people from darkness to light. And the people remember and are thankful, but then fall back into living as if they were in darkness. This is a pattern established in the defining event of the people of God, when God rescues them from slavery in Egypt and leads them through water into the promised land, into freedom and life. And that defines who they are and establishes their special relationship. You will be my people and I will be your God. By the time of Isaiah, the people are still remembering this defining event. They are still coming together to thank God for it, but they have forgotten what that freedom looks like. They are so bound up in their ritual and regulations of their religion that they'd lost sight of freedom and life given to them by God. They're not living as those in freedom and light, but rather as those still stumbling around in the darkness. Isaiah calls out, get ready, because here comes God. Stop living as if God is not with you. Turn away from darkness towards light. Get ready, 
because God is coming close. And for a while, the people listen and change direction. But there is something about us, and we might call it sin, that seems to pull us towards the darkness. And then, sometime later, a voice calls out in the wilderness, get ready, because here comes God. Stop living as if God was not with you. Turn away from darkness towards light. Once again, the people of God remember and are thankful, but once again have forgotten what freedom looked like. Again, they're bound up in ritual and regulations of their religion, and again, they've lost sight of freedom and life. In a reenactment of their defining story, John the Baptist crashes into the oddly comforting darkness in which the people of God are existing and urges them to come once again through water into life, light and freedom. Get ready because God is coming close. Mark, the action movie gospel writer, takes us by the collar and shakes us. Mark begins by waking us up, but it's not a gentle whisper of encouragement. It's a bright light being switched on and a face full of cold water. This strange man in the wilderness, John the Baptist, challenged everything his hearers thought they knew as normal. He is wild and strange and shouts across their dreams and nightmares. What they'd come to expect as normal was coming to an end. A new era was beginning. This is how it starts, Mark says. This is what we have been waiting for, for generations. Do more than remember and be thankful. Do not go back into darkness. Keep moving towards the light. Do not go back into ritual and regulation, but live as those who have been given freedom and life. Get ready because God is coming close. God will rescue us once and for all from the darkness and his glorious light will remain with us by the Spirit. Repent, literally turn around and look forward. Get ready for the ancient and brand new thing God is doing. Repent, get ready to come once again through water into freedom. John had been plunging people into water. The one who is coming will plunge them into something far more powerful, far more dangerous. The one who is coming will plunge them into the Holy Spirit. So this is the pattern that we see again and again, moving from darkness to light, remembering and being thankful and yet drifting gently back into darkness. And if we're not careful, it's a pattern that we can absent-mindedly fall into. This Advent season, so many of the comfortable ways are familiar rituals and religious practices through which we remember and are thankful have been taken away from us. They're not available to us. And perhaps that's a good thing. It's not that these religious rituals and practices are bad in and of themselves, just that if we're not careful, we can mistake them for the real thing. When in fact, they are only ever supposed to be signposts to the real thing. The real thing is God with us, 
bringing freedom, light and life. So yes, perhaps this stripped back spacious Advent season is a good thing. Perhaps this gives us space to notice where we have become bound up in ritual and regulations, where we have lost sight of freedom and life. Perhaps this offers us the possibility of seeing afresh the story that is so familiar we might have lost sight of it. Perhaps the strangeness of this year will allow us to look beyond the manger and shepherds we are so accustomed to and notice the wet and wild prophet yelling across the desert. Perhaps we can take this opportunity to step back and let light shine on what is really important and what is not. Perhaps we will notice where we have slipped into the oddly comforting darkness. In The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, when the children realise that Aslan is a lion, they ask, is he safe? Of course he's not safe, replies Mr Beaver, but he is good. This Advent is unexpected and scary. It's by no means safe and familiar, but perhaps it's good. Perhaps it gives us the possibility of consciously turning towards the light, of fully embracing freedom and life just where we are. Get ready. God is coming close. Amen.
And so to the creed, let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, as we bring our prayers and intercessions to you, we thank you that you are a God of love, compassion, mercy and patience, who hears us when we cry out to you in faith. In these unprecedented times, help us to stand firm in our faith and hold on to your promises for us and our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we have remembered John the Baptist sent to prepare the way for your son Jesus, help us all to remember and prepare ourselves during this season of Advent for the most amazing gift to the world of your Son that we will celebrate at Christmas. In your grace and mercy, grant us a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit across our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we are in the middle of the, this current period of lockdown, we pray for all businesses struggling to keep afloat, all who are laid off, furloughed or unemployed, all in self-isolation, and those in despair, that they might have hope for the future. May the nation observe rules imposed to show that they care for each other, to help each other, to be strong for the weak, and show good humour fortitude and courage in the face of adversity as our own ancestors have in the past. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worldwide church, all denominations in it, different and diverse, yet all worshipping the same Father, Son and Holy Spirit. For those who suffer persecution for their faith across the world, please protect them. For our bishops, Rachel and Robert. For all clergy, especially Kate, Simon, Graham, Helen and Matthew. We pray for renewed faith and inspiration for new, for new ways to worship you in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless, guide and keep well Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom and guidance to all members of Parliament at this difficult time for our nation and direct every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage, hope and faith in their troubles and surround them with your peace. Help, strengthen and keep safe all who work in the hospitals, surgeries, care homes and serving others. We give thanks for vaccines being prepared and pray that they may be delivered quickly across all the world. We pray for all who mourn the loss of loved ones, that they may receive your comfort and peace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We come to the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
and we come to the blessing. May God, the Son who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, come, oh, come, amen.